first of all i like to emphasize on the title which mentions that how to write claims in an indian patent application here i have uh, particularly on specify that it is indian patent application right because as you all know that patents are territorial right so uh, in a patent once granted in india will be enforceable in india only that's why uh, the drafting styles of different countries are somewhat different because the uh, patentable subject matter in uh, various countries differ from each other so in today's presentation i'll be just focusing on drafting the claims or the specification in a whole i in indian jurisdictions in india uh i'll be leading you to uh yeah so uh, my presentation basically will involve these uh, sections which will start from basics the relevant to be understanding while drafting an application related to licenses particularly the requisites of drafting an application and claims course and the don'ts when you are the don'ts will emphasize that the common mistakes which were done earlier by i am particularly emphasizing on ndris uh, application because i have dealt with them and i have seen that earlier some some um, major features which should be there in games were missing so it's not a uh, something that um, uh, you should be you know uh, think less of or down of but yeah it, this, that is a common mistake which happened because of none of that particular knowledge of drafting the games yeah so going with the basics um i'll just briefly cover the patent uh, thing that it is an exclusive right uh, which is territorial nature as i said earlier and it is provided to an inventor for disclosure of his invention and that right is uh, provided by the government to the inventor uh, and it is kind of a monopolial right where uh, you may uh, and you can actually uh, stop the other people or the competitors from making using selling by doing all these activities uh, of his invention so it's kind of a monopoly which is given by the uh, government in turn they have to disclose their invention specifically and uh, i would say in in a whole like as such that uh, the that particular invention can be performed by any person who has minimum or ordinary skill in that particular art so here there are some condition which you can see that there is invention it of course the main criteria which is related to its its novelty in uh, inventive step and industrial applicability industrial applicability as sir said dr dhin said that uh, if your invention is not useful it's of no use then right even even if you are uh, getting a patent for it and if you are not getting it worked uh, it is not serving the purpose so and and here i am i have seen that they have done a very good uh, research work in past and they are of course currently doing it and many of those patents are being licensed as well and uh, royalties has been earned from them so industrial applicability of course constitute a very important part in that criteria so invention happens a novel uh, it should be novel it should have inventive step industrial applicability and uh, which is not otherwise barred by the act so th this provision i will be dealing in briefly in my next slides uh, it should be patentable so uh, if it is patentable the subject matter and it has it is actually qualifying all these three criteria the patent will be granted of course after uh, the uh, normal course of procedure which happens in prosecution uh, then of course uh, it, if if it is in public domain or it is an art uh, it's known or it's, uh, it's it's not it's actually obvious so that will be considered as non patentable that particular subject matter and when an invention includes some technical advancement over the knowledge which is already existing in the art then it is called an invention in terms of the provisions of our um, act which is the indian patent act 1970 of course the rights which can be like uh, the terms uh, uh, which which is given like the the period of right will be 20 years from the date of filing the application in india so again i'm i'm not i'm not going in detail of it but as an invention it has been defined particularly in the indian patents act there is particular section which relates uh, to this and it defines the invention and the inventive step as well uh, section 21j that in, uh, that mentions particularly that invention should be new product or process which involves an inventive step and is capable of industrial application why we are i'm emphasizing on new product or process because uh, any kind of use in here in india is not granted only the product as an article what are can be any form it can be combination also a product of something an article something like that and processes of in fact uh, generating that particular uh, product can also be 
patented. So only process and product patents are allowable in India. No use patent or even a new use, new use is not patentable in India. Inventive step, as I mentioned earlier also, that it should involve technical advancement when compared to the existing uh, knowledge. Uh, sorry, I, I'm, I'm really sorry to be uh, interrupted in the between, but uh, this particularly some, I believe something is happening with this line and all. Someone is drawing on this line. Okay, okay, we will leave it. Uh, so, uh, and inventive, uh, for inventive stuff, as I mentioned earlier, that it is uh, a feature uh, which is involved in the invention, which is contributing to the technical advancement of the knowledge which is already existing in the art. And it can be very simple, and we will be giving an example of it as well. That it can be very simple uh, in, uh, uh, modification of the knowledge which is known in the art, which can contribute uh, or can, can be considered as non obvious. Uh, invention and that can actually help you to generate a, a huge revenue. Uh, so, uh, it, of course, taking advancement is there and at all it may have economical significance. Like if you are uh, developing a process which involves, I believe, one step process and earlier in the art, only two step process of doing something was there, you are actually reducing the time, the tools and the uh, skills or uh, the manpower which is required to perform that uh, process. So of course, it is leading to uh, a economically viable uh, process and that will be considered as inventive if all the documents and all the art uh, and no, none of the art is suggesting that particular uh, uh, process. And even both. So uh, both, uh, if it involves both, then of course that invention will be considered as involving the inventive step. Uh, we have discussed this more or less. So uh, main important thing is here uh, that uh, while, while of course thinking about invention, and generally it happens also with the scientists of India I have seen, that uh, there is a problem solution approach which is taken here. So whenever you are actually uh, uh, working or researching on something, you focus on the problems which are there in the art and you try uh, to provide a solution to the uh, invention. That solution might be new but might not be uh, uh, non-obvious or involving inventive step. So in that case, uh, it, you, you have to take care of the thing that if you are providing in terms of technical advancement or uh, you know economical effectiveness, you are providing something to that or contributing some particular uh, uh, you know uh, um, uh, I would say uh, uh, effort in creating such an invention which is actually providing the solution and making that particular solution economically viable. So in that way, you may be contributing to the uh, inventive step. Of course, um, later on in drafting portion, I will come and I'll, uh, I'll of course, um, uh, disclose that how you can even, like an invention is obvious in terms of art, how we can overcome uh, that thing by providing uh, relevant data related to the inventions, the art in which we are drafting. Uh, novelty, it's as the name suggests, an invention is novel if it is known to anybody in the world uh, in that very form, like in particularly that form. Here, I would like to add that uh, by assessing novelty of an application, of course, when you do research, you consider some some particular feature to be novel to uh, your invention and you say that it is novel. Um, in case of patents, particularly, the novelty is actually accessed throughout the world, though the patent right is territorial, but your novelty of your work will be searched uh, against the work published in the whole world. So while um, developing something, I would be suggesting to research it properly across the globe through all the uh, freely available patent databases uh, which are there. Yeah, Google patent is there. Uh, you have uh, patent lens which is also free. So in that case you can uh, and there are uh, patent offices websites which provide you uh, ample amount of data. There is SpaceNet which is uh, related to uh, European Patent Office, USPTO. Uh, the website is there which is of course uh, contains a database of US Patent Office. Uh, so in, on that you can search for patent literature of course, for uh, uh, the non-patent literatures, which are called like general publication and articles, you can uh, you do have databases like uh, um, there are there are uh, Nature's uh, publication and CBI is there, Springer is there. So you can search on those uh, platforms for uh, documents which may uh, suggest or relate uh, the area in which you are developing your invention. Uh, 
So again, an invention is novel if it is not published, known to general public anywhere in the world before filing the patent application, as I added earlier also. Now to destroy the novelty of invention, the prior publication or whatever disclosure is there, it may be a blog written on the internet activity that must be clearly and explicitly, they should show the whole invention. So in novelty, we have one benefit that your invention as such should be disclosed in one patent application or one one uh, literature, one publication, one any publication which was there in the art. So in this case, how we, uh, and then, then the uh, uh, art of drafting plays a role here because by establishing novelty, Oh, just a second. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. Um, so to destroy novelty of invention, the prior art publication, of course, this thing, uh, like all all the features of the uh, uh, invention, should be mentioned in that prior art document. I'll we'll to later that how uh, to establish novelty with with, with the same language. Um, I believe prior art thing is very clear to all of you that what it constitutes prior art. Prior art is publishing research paper. Prior C. Even single sale is sufficient for that matter, providing sample for market survey, accidental use, circulating pamphlets and sharing presentations as well. Uh, they are considered as prior art. So here's an example of novelty where I have just shown that uh, this is a pencil and then you add uh, or you just change the feature of this pencil in terms of including a lead, a grip, a clicker mechanism to it and you raise it. In, in any case, if that pen pencil is there as a prior art and any of these features is there, but this particular pencil is not involved in that feature, right? Like, the mechanism, it's not there. So, your invention, which is this, the uh, uh, pencil with that uh, grey pen lid and everything, etc. This will be considered as novel to the normal pencil, which is there, which or, uh, which only can um, actually have lead and eraser. There's a very simple is novelty. Inventive step, which is also known as non-obviousness, because it will be like, um, if few documents, if they are read together and they are they were there of uh, in the public domain earlier to filing your application uh, and a person uh, like a good scientist if they if he would have read the, read those documents for his own research and would be motivated from those uh, teachings that okay I should do this and then develop something so maybe he will be uh, having a novel invention with him but then those that particular invention would not be considered as inventive. So, non-obviousness, it means, or involving an inventive step, it means, could not be envisaged by a person of ordinary skill in the art. Extraordinary results should be there, which includes, of course, in terms of, if I say, uh, fielding, uh, if, if some, uh, in agricultural point of view, I would say, a uh, good yield of that part, a particular crop or uh, cost. Uh, the, as I said, that reduction of cost may be there, um, you know, economical viability or uh, time duration is less. So, in terms of these all parameters and many more, it can be. It can be in any ways related to that particular science. So, there should be no hindsight review of it, of course. Uh, so, it can be simple technology. As sir also Dr. Uh, Singh also mentioned that, uh, and you know, a particular very, very small invention also can give you a large revenue. So, uh, it happens generally that you should not like uh, be only focused on a, giving a very high rocket science type of invention, but a really normal invention where problem solutions approach do uh, exist. That can also provide you um, a great uh, product for um, um, encashing your, uh, you know, um, of course, the revenue, the, for generating the revenue, uh, which can be uh, beneficial for more R&D. So I'll be just playing this video once you just go through it and then try to understand that um, how sim simple the invention is. Uh, it involves that, uh, or it has this capability of uh, considered as an inventive uh, product. And of course, it is eligible for getting a patent and um, and getting, of course, uh, licensed and you know uh, for generating revenue for the institute. Yeah, likely history. Uh, Shikha, we are not getting voice. In fact, you can uh, you can speak while video is being run. Okay, okay. So just a sec, I'll. Uh, uh, I have selected speaker system. Uh, the voice is not coming also. No, no, I think, in fact, you can give the commentary behind you. So yeah, so, so generally, uh, this particular video actually mentions, uh, just a second, I'll mute it for me. So generally, this particular in, um, thing mentions that uh, all these, all these adhesives which you can see, so it is actually mentioning about two uh, scientists 
uh, here you can see that uh, uh, one of the scientists were, I was actually working for one uh, and he's a company and uh, uh, this company which I'm talking about was 3M, right? So earlier they were into a different kind of uh, business like me mechanical tools, etc. And uh, they were preparing this uh, um, different form of adhesive. So one of the scientists, what he did uh, that um, he accidentally actually prepared, it was not accident, he was trying to uh, prepare a good adhesive, but he prepared some kind of adhesive which was uh, very weak. So, uh, and he didn't find use of it, but he was curious that when he has prepared it, it may have some kind of use to that associated. He was not able to find that use particularly. And then there was, there was one other scientist. Uh, so I'm talking about uh, this particular scientist, which is, so, um, yeah. so yes. So actually this scientist actually, in, um, in discussed this particular adhesive, which he accidentally created with all of his friends and then said that, uh, see, I wanted to, uh, create very, uh, um, strong adhesive, but in terms, I have created a lot, like, normal one. So there was another scientist, R. Fry, who actually this scientist, who uh, used to read most of books and everything and he has to like um, uh, uh, um, tag those books on particular pages. I the feature is coming on as of uh, in George Heimer. I mean difficulty of uh, sticking to a particular page, I mean uh, due to uh, falling off the uh, this marker, book markers. So what he did after I, he actually helped the other scientists which I was talking about that um, he uh, actually used that particular weak adhesive on a piece of paper and uh, he used that particular adhesive as a uh, post-it note. And then that post-it note become a uh, very, I would say, uh, it's a very uh, renowned uh, office uh, uh, accessories tool, uh, which nowadays use, are used in, I, I believe, every institution, every schools, every organizations, every offices, everywhere. So from there, they develop a business of, I believe, uh, more than um, billions, more than uh, 100 billions of uh, revenue they have generated from that particular weak adhesive, which uh, I think Dr. Victor was there who, who prepared it. So uh, now you, you can see from here that they have a business and now from that particular uh, uh, earlier business of 3M, they moved to this office uh, accessories uh, business, both of them. So uh, this is uh, the the story behind this particular uh, invention, which was not a rocket science invention, but of course, uh, a very uh, simple invention, which involved inventor. So I'll be closing out it here because the uh, rest, rest of the videos uh, just only mentions that no invention is um, um, small or big. Invention is immense invention and it, it all invention has uh, the capability or ability to get protected under patents. Uh, of course, so entirely different approach is also required. I mean, the that terms, I would say that the approach should be uh, such that uh, it, it would not have been uh, speculated by um, the people working in that particular field earlier then of course it should be better than existing technology and that can be uh, established later on by if, if at all it is required to be proved to the patent office. So this is the particular uh, uh, chart which is there. So if there is a knowledge and time uh, on x-axis where you can say that in, in, in this is an obvious improvement which is going on, right? So knowledge is not that much, but of course, with time it is increasing. Invention is such that it actually has an uh, increase in uh, the uh, technology of that particular invention. I mean, of course, that was not known. And that in contributes uh, the invent uh, to the invention to the inventive step basically. Um, I'll be skipping this particular side because it is all related to uh, normal general sciences where uh, just to give an example of what is an uh, in, uh, invention which involves inventive steps. So very very quickly I will say that microwave oven, which is the clean invention, is an oven which comprises a magnetron for heat food. State of the art mentioned that electrical and gas ovens for heating food are there. In radar technology, it is known to use an electron to, uh, tube for generating microwaves. So, does this involve an inventive step? Is, this question is for everyone. So, you can read the uh, example and then uh, let me know that does it does it include inventive step? And then, uh, the game invention says an oven which comprises a magnetron from heating for heating food and electrical and gas ovens for heating food are there. And in 
radar technology is known to use an electron tube for generating microwaves. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is inventive. The, the the product is inventive. No, you meant no, you meant that uh, it is not inventive. But it is inventive because these two are not suggesting or not con they are giving a converging uh, idea of using this particular radar technology or uh, the, the, the technology which was there, the electron tube for generating microwaves in any food appliances, right? So the person is skilled art does not find any stimulus or hint in the prior art to apply a magnetron for heating food. So in this way, the inventive step is actually judged. Some some particular technology is known to do something. Some other particular technology is known to do some other thing. When a, when a document actually suggests convergence of these two or say that this can be applied in this, then that particular document is suggesting towards your invention and making it obvious. But if such thing is not happening, then invention does involve in inventors, right? Going to the second one, framework of beams. The state of art states that support structure with a framework of beams are known in the state of art. Usually the beams are made of steel. Now the invention is a support structure with the same frame of beams whereby the beams made of aluminium to make it lighter has been claimed. Does this particular invention involves inventive step? Read state of the art and invention only you'll get to know. A quick answer would be appreciated here. Okay. So I would be saying no. Now what, why, why I am saying no? Because a person who knows uh, this, uh, who is working in this particular state of art, he knows that aluminium is used for making any kind of structure or pieces which are lighter. So easily, the steel that can be replaced with the aluminium, right? So state of the art mentioned that it is made of steel and of course they are using the same particular uh, framework for uh, preparing the beam structure. So any person who is working in this particular field would uh, know that it, the steel can also be replaced by a lighter material. So uh, let's use aluminium. So in that way, uh, you will have to uh, know that uh, of course the controllers also access the games in such way. Um, but of course a reading proof is required and it can be given very easily. So here the, the particular invention does not involve an inventive step. Because of the reason that steel can easily be removed by aluminium that will be known to a person skill in the art. Now, the provisions which I wish to discuss with you. Uh, while drafting life sciences application, we have faced uh, this particular thing that uh, in our patents act, few exclusions are provided, which I will go through very quickly. And afterwards, if you need, I can, of course, this slide will be shared with you. You can go through it uh, in detail. So, uh, there is first is 3A, which is actually, uh, uh, it prohibits um, any invention which is frivolous invention uh, or uh, of course, it's of no use and an invention which is contrary to well established natural laws. So, such inventions will not be patentable. Then 3B is actually uh, exclusions which are there uh, in which commercial exploitation or primary use of invention in which which is actually contrary to public order or morality uh, is prohibited and which causes serious prejudice to health or human, animal, plant life or to the environment that is there. So, sometimes uh, you may have seen also that stem cells related uh, uh, inventions do face uh, such issues as as it is considered that the stem cells are actually prepared or they are obtained by uh, destroying the uh, embryonic uh, cells of uh, the fetus. Uh, section 3, in section 3C, uh, of course, mere discovery of standing principle or um, formulation of an abstract theory or discovery of any uh, living thing or discovery of non-living substance of any nature are considered as falling under 3C. Here, the important point to be noted will be that any uh, sequences like say nucleotide if you are uh, 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 try to claim if you are claiming for that and uh, or, or peptide which are just merely isolated from a beam uh, that will be falling under this particular section because it are they as a non-living substance are considered to be a uh, non-patentable subject matter. Uh, 3D, of course, um, 3D is generally applied uh, to, uh, I believe, mostly uh, pharmaceutical sciences. But yes, it is applicable to all the all the area of uh, uh, technology and science. The mere discovery of any new form of a known substance which does not result in enhancement of a known efficacy of that particular substance or the new use of a known substance or of the mere use of known process, machine or apparatus unless such known process results in a new product or employs at least one new reactant is considered non-patentable uh, under section 3D. Here are the two things which I like to mention while the, uh, the patent act do uh, prohibits uh, um, patent 
of patenting of uh, new form of new substance, but it also also provides a particular um, I would say uh, uh, a loophole where it means it's, it's not a loophole. I'm sorry. Uh, it uh, it provides a chance to at least come out of this particular uh, provision um, in terms of when it is a new uh, form of a known substance and it is a known. Means of a new process. Uh, in in case of a new form of a new substance, how you can overcome uh, any objection raised under uh, Section C D is that you can show that it but the, the new form or the the, the der derivative or any kind of a new form of that particular substance is actually showing an, a very enhanced efficacy. I'm in a uh, very uh, renowned uh, decision in what is from the Supreme Court uh, in 2013. It was mentioned that this efficacy, the term efficacy, was defined as therapeutic efficacy for the pharmaceutical uh, components or the compound. So, enhancement of the known efficacy of that substance over the substance which is closer to that particular new form. Right? If there is A and you have made made A one, so you have to show in your specification the data for uh, enhanced activity of A one over A. So that is there. So if you if you are able to show that. Section three D will be uh, supplement, uh, and then becomes mere use of known process, uh, machine or apparatus. So in this case, what is the uh, uh, benefit which has been provided here for you is that you have to show that particular process if you are claiming and it is, has been objected under Section three D. You have to show that the process result in new product or. It involves a new reactant in terms of, and um, um, it is actually meant for uh, chemical reactions here. But uh, it can be anything. Even if you are mentioning one step which is contributing to the, um, you know, um, advancement of the process or better uh, activity of that particular process, that one step will also be considered as in some kind of a new reactant. I would new reactant is a new feature of. Uh, these are all explanation which has been provided. You may go through uh, later on on yourselves. That uh, and these are all provided in the Indian Patent Act as well. So like, this is just an explanation of what is uh, the uh, new form or what are the uh, new form constitutes. So that can be seen later on. Again, Section three in terms of composition, it is more relevant. Uh, where it has to be proved that uh, the composition which is obtained is not just an additive. Uh, composition. It is. It is somewhat. Uh, it results in somewhat surprising effect. Like uh, one plus one is not two. It is four. So you have to show in that way that uh, the what I am combining together may they may have their different activities, but by combination when I am getting the uh, composition as my product, it's not showing the uh, additive result of that particular. Uh, Individual components. It's showing something different, even additional. Something additional is coming up from that. So one very uh, common example which has been uh, given here is Combiflam. So paracetamol antipyretic plus uh, brufen analgesic. So solution of sugar and colored hydrogen in water to form a solvent. That has composition, right? Three H is also one of the relevant portion here because ICR is the institute and. I can see many people are there from other institutes as well. So in three years, uh, just only mention that method of agriculture or horticulture is uh, precluded, and uh, that uh, includes example of cultivation of algae, producing new form of a known substance, uh, known uh, sorry, producing new form of a known plant, preparation of an improved soil. These all uh, things comes under three H. Uh, but uh, of course, agricultural equipments they are patentable. So if someone is preparing something, some kind of a tool which was not uh, there earlier, and uh, it involves again novelty, inventive step, and uh, industrial applicability, that can be considered for uh, filing a patent. And of course, later on, after the normal course of procedure, can proceed to grant as well. Three so, yeah, I a very important one here. Any process for medicinal, surgical. Curative, prophylactic, diagnostic, therapeutic, or other treatment of human being, or similar treatment of animals, to render them free of disease, or to increase their economic value, or that of their products, right? That is not patentable. Many kind of for process which is related to all these uh, method of treatments and diagnosis, they are uh, precluded from patentability. However, any method of treatment of plants, for that matter, uh, they are allowable. Three uh, J is a very again clear one where it is it mentions it plants and animals in whole or any part thereof. Um, other than microorganism, but this uh, other than microorganism should be read with section three C, which I explained earlier. That micro mo, microorganism merely as, uh, isolated from uh, certain kind of natural sources, say soil, uh, would not be considered as patentable subject matter, right? Because it 
is required that that particular uh, microorganism should have some kind of genetic modification and uh, that should result in of course uh, but the, some some better activity of that particular microbe uh, it also uh, prohibits uh, of course uh, uh, better breeding of seeds varieties and uh, particular species of the plants and animals etc and um, uh, essentially biological process here essentially biological process by it means that uh, normal procedure of uh, regeneration of plants um, uh, like which happens uh, uh, by nature itself uh, that that are considered as essentially biological process for production or propagation of plants and animals so section 3j is one uh, last yeah so basically this preclusion covers plants and animals in whole parts of plants and animals seeds variety the biological process for propagation or production of the elements plant section 3p is again a very uh, relevant one for life sciences invention uh, it is um, actually related to inventions which are traditional knowledge it's known to public like say uh, if you are if you are claiming something related to neem and it it has antimicrobial activity a composition which includes only neem extract or some something like that uh, then that will fall under section 3p because uh, neem for uh, Antimicrobial activities has been used for ages by uh, us Indians, so that will not be considered a patentable subject matter. And moving forward, again, Section Ten Four is also a relevant one here because inventions of this uh, this particular category that which falls within the uh, Section Twenty One of again uh, other uh, uh, legisla legislation, which is of the Atomic Energy Act, nineteen sixty two. They are not patentable, however. um this is this i am providing it to you please read it later on uh, it mentions that uh, uh, inventions like as for as from the commencement of this act no patent shall be granted for invention which is in the opinion of the central government are useful or related to production control use or disposal of atomic energy as such because you know that the atomic molecules do have uh, adverse effect effect on the people's health and everything else so that's why this provision was included to control such inventions which actually includes high amount of uses of such such particular uh, molecules um but um well, but it is causing a little bit of problem to us uh yeah so you uh, need to go to the fan prospect in mining etc and this these all things are there which are actually precluded from patentability uh in terms of getting a patent uh, for the invention which are uh, which are including actually uh, some kind of uh, radioactive materials uh so uh and then the list of list of this particular compounds which are considered uh, i believe uh, not not good for human health or uh, environment that has been notified by central government so they they keep on revising that particular list and we one can see and then uh, be careful enough to utilize such compounds in their invention Uh, industrial application is i as i said invention is capable of being made or capable of being used in an industry now we are coming to specification from here we are starting our own uh, very awaited topic right so application particularly or in application particularly is a technical and a legal uh, document combination of both um, i am here discussing two types only which is provisional specification and complete specification uh timings of filing it's like if you are uh, in a hurry or if you want to block a date because uh, blocking a date in filing patent is very important so uh, if you have an invention and you have commenced it but still not um, completed it or not got enough results what you can do is to save the date which is very important again in terms of uh, uh making an even making that invention a pub, uh, like uh, you know just just saving the date so that uh, no uh, other uh, researcher or uh, no other uh, uh, scientist um, can uh, you know uh, work on the same field as yours and uh, uh, secure patent for an invention which you were supposed to do earlier to you by filing an earlier application so it is advisable and suggested of course to uh, file a provisional application um very soon uh once you commence your invention research i'm sorry the research and uh, get a date secured from this particular provisional application from there you will have 12 months of time to file your complete application which will be called complete specification in fact right 
and in that particular 12 month of time you can uh, gather all the data which is required to make your invention eligible or uh, to uh, you know qualify the criteria which i described earlier which is novelty inventive step and industrial applicability and then the uh, prosecution and everything will uh, later on start so i'm not going on a timeline zone right now because it's very focused on only drafting purpose right so uh, provisional specification complete specification are two specifications which are can be filed in india you can file direct complete as well if if you have all the information available with us uh, with you uh, right so a uh, provisional uh, specification includes basically the description of a very general nature uh, not not uh, unreasonably general but a yeah, very general nature it's it's not like it's not required to um, specify each and every feature of your invention if you have a general idea of what you are going to do and uh, what you are aiming to achieve you can uh, uh, provide that in uh, in writing and get it filed so it also includes a uh, title of invention field of the application is required anticipated result if any are there uh, it's not mandatory but you can provide it and it may include some kind of going to explain the invention more uh, uh, specifically and it should not uh, include claims so uh, this is the one uh, good thing here is that on claims you don't have to spend much time here you, if you have a general idea you can just get it filed um, prepare it and get it filed now the most relevant provision which is uh, related to this uh, drafting of this specification is uh, section 10 of the indian patent act which actually mentions the contents of complete uh, specification so from the provisional application uh, and complete specification there is one difference only which is a major difference that you won't have to do claims in your provisional application so otherwise the content will be more or less same itself of course provisional is very brief compared to complete so every specification whether provisional or complete shall describe the invention and shall begin with a title which sufficiently indicates the subject matter to which the invention is related so say if you are claiming particular composition so composition for the the uses thereof that will be the title and of course as per the rules it, it is mentioned that the title should not be more than 15 words so it, it should be within 15 words limit so in that way you can craft the title so every complete specification shall and these are very uh, important four points which should be noted um, every complete specification shall fully and particularly describe the invention and its operation or use and the method by which it's to be performed here fully and particularly describe the invention would mean when you are drafting a particular uh, application that you should include all the relevant information related to your research right all the results which you have uh, you may obtain or you are obtaining everything will be included in that and then then and and the and the basic uh, feature which you want to claim that should be defined uh, both in a in a general way and in a specific way right so and and nothing from the claim like uh, it should not be like that you are defining something or claiming something else you may be claiming what you have disclosed in your specification so you have to uh, provide all the relevant information in your specification disclose the performing the invention which is known to the applicant and for which he is entitled to claim protection here i always suggest to uh, my scientists when i will discuss with them while drafting that uh, if if they are providing uh, a particular range of uh, um, certain parameters say say time range or say concentration range or something so at least these should give like of course uh, the the examples for the best range for which they are getting the best results and the upper and lower limit should also uh, be uh, like uh, should uh, the examples related to those upper and lower limit should also be provided so that uh, if you are claiming a workable range we are in a position to argue later that see we have provided the examples for uh, the extreme range and extreme lower and higher ranges in between and of course the particular range for which we are saying that the invention works better or the best uh, we have we have provided all these things and since that range is workable we have included it so it is very uh, easy for us to justify the ranges which are claimed later on in the claims so again here you have to include examples in the uh, application uh, sorry uh, so uh, then after that it is end 
we of course end that particular uh, document right after specification is done from the next page the claim portion starts and that particular uh, disclosure of yours should end with a claim or claims defining the scope of the invention which is before which the protection is uh, to be claimed and it, of course after the claims uh, comes the abstracts to provide technical uh, information on the invention where which is actually uh, uh, required for searching purposes more from uh, from the patent office like they do search in title apps now that particular section comes with the proviso also where the main proviso there are two one and two but i am not going for one i am going for the second one which it mentions that if the applicant mentions a biological material in this specification which may not be described in such a way as to satisfy the clauses a and b now going up again uh, going up again clauses a and b fully described like some some kind of a um, new uh, microorganism uh, you may have uh, um, generated right i mean created invented or uh, that may not be described in terms of uh, its features but that in that case what you can do is that uh, you can of course uh, any any such kind of uh, invented uh, genetically modified microorganisms are required to be submitted before filing international depository authority uh, there is mpcc in india and there is one more in pune i'm forgetting the name i'm sorry uh, so uh, both both on this uh, both uh, in this depository you can uh, deposit the genetically modified newly invented and you are wishing to claim that particular uh, microorganism to that authority and that is done under the bwa studio so uh, in such case we are uh, the, uh, the biological material you are not able to uh, define it properly as to satisfy the clauses which i uh, described earlier and if such of course such material is not available to public then this requirement comes that you have to um, deposit that particular You are depositing it to a to a channel or MTCC. So they will be providing an accession number. That particular detail you can provide in the specification itself, um, uh, and it should be done earlier to filing. Of course, then by the time you are will get that uh, accession number, and you can incorporate that into your a provision or complete specification as the case may be. All the unique characteristics of the material required for it to be correctly identified, of course, or indicated or uh, uh, and are included in the specification to be name address and deposit institution everything the date and number of deposition all the details should be provided so this is related to mostly the deposition if you are making the uh, most important thing which comes uh, uh, and it is it is generally usually uh, raised uh, this particular objection is that if the biological material is mentioned in the specification is always required that you should disclose the source and geographical origin of that particular material in the specification when it is used as a specification so this requirement is uh while we do argue that uh, it is available to public or you know if you are mentioning some kind of plants do the, now, now you may ask that if a particular plant is known to public and i'm just using it so should i also mention ki maine usko kahan se liya ha wo thoda zaruri ho jata hai because again uh, this particular uh, section uh, is also related to a requirement of national biodiversity authority so uh, in every application they mention uh, us and they want us to declare in form 1 uh, which is a form for filing the application in india uh, in that they want us or the inventors to declare that the uh, particular biological material which has been mentioned is not obtained from india ab wo bar bar usko cut karoge aur karoge usse zyada wo fir ye bolte hain then you disclose it that from where you have got it so if it is from india then nda a requirement comes into picture so that's why uh, the patent office actually uh, requires the applicants who are using indian uh, biological resources to mention that from where it is coming and just to uh, uh, check that whether the nda requirement is required or not okay now requisites so requisites of filing any like preparing any claim and uh, uh, structuring any claim is this first you have to identify novel and inventive feature right and of course the use of it and ensure the same by a particular search if you want to hire some uh, uh, company for that do it if you want to do it uh, yourself as i mentioned there are freely available databases to search for patents and non patent uh, documents as well so do a very thorough search before in uh, before initiating a draft um and and then then initiate your drafting and what the general practice which i follow while drafting claim is that uh, i first draft the claims uh after reading the of course the complete disclosure i just first draft the claims and then on the lines of the claims okay i now want to claim this 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 like if if i am i am having an invention where um i have uh, 
polynucleotides to glim. And then after that, I have some construct to glim, which includes that polynucleotide. And then a vector which comp comprises that uh, construct. And then a host cell which comprises that particular vector. And of course, the method of uh, uh, doing something with that particular uh, construct. So if I have that aspects in my mind, I will be uh, uh, claiming this, this, this. It will be easier for me to conform my specification in that respect, right? So first, always go for clean drafting and then make the specification consistent with your idea of claim drafting, your aspects of the claims. Uh, it is always advisable to keep the claims uh, reasonably broad, not unreasonably broad, reasonably broad because then those claims will be the only documents which will be uh, there for you to enforce your rights, right? Of course, the specification also part of play, plays a role, but the major role is played by the claim document, which is a technical legal document. And those claims only be, be uh, will be enforced in case of any kind of uh, infringement happening or even if you're licensing your technology, you may have experienced it also that claims plays a very important role in that because that defines the scope of your invention which needs to, which is being protected if it is, it, it, or will be protected if it is under uh, prosecution or pending. Now, the structure of claim, I will be defining, um, okay. I hope this line is uh, not uh, uh, creating any kind of problem to you all. Uh, Dr. Rajan, please confirm. No, 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 not at all. I mean, uh, okay, because it is like... Uh, I don't know how it has come, but it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, now the structure of claims, which, are, which is uh, for what we are here. First of all, claims are... Uh, Structure involves and it is a kind of a statement which you are giving to Indian Patent Office that what you are willing to claim, what subject matter is being claimed. So, as you have seen in all the other documents while writing an affidavit, also you may have noticed any kind of a declaration you may have given in your notice that we or I declare or claim hereby, like this it goes, right? So, since it is a technical legal document, it starts with a, a preamble. And that says that I or we claim, and again, if it is an individual person, it will be I claim. If it is an institute, uh, being a scientist, if you are filing it from like, uh, mostly uh, NDRI files, uh, uh, ICR as an applicant, so it's we, because ICR is an institute. So uh, we claim, and then the claim starts, claim number. So uh, as I mentioned earlier also, the claim always starts from the uh, fresh page, like a specification is ended, then fresh page is claim, and after that, uh, again, and up start on a separate page. So claim should start from a first page after the detailed description of the invention and should be serially numbered. That is very common. What the claim involves, basically, it generally consists of three parts. First is preamble, the starting of the claim, what you want to claim, and it includes that. The transition phase, where you, uh, again, include the, uh, the, the novel inventive feature, you do include that, and the body which defines that novel and inventive feature more. So I have actually purposefully uh, highlighted this portion here because by giving an example, it will be easier to you to show that what, what portion of the claim is preamble, what portion of the claim is transitional phase, and what portion is body. So what is the transitional, uh, what is the preamble? It is actually an introductory phase which identifies the category of invention, right? Like it is a product, like a composition of or this having or comprising. So it's a composition that is giving you an introduction of your invention. And uh, sometimes the purpose of this is, for example, a machine for waxing paper, um, a composition for fertilizing soil. So of course it is combined with a purpose, but not necessarily it should be combined with a pur purpose. It, a composition comprising this, 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 this. It can be that also, right? So that is your preamble of a claim. Now transition phase is actually uh, the phase where you are uh, providing the feature of that thing. So it can be uh, like, as per manual, there are four types of uh, transitional phase words which are being uh, provided that you can include comprising, including, consisting of, consisting essentially of. Here I would like to highlight that uh, this particular term or the word comprising is most commonly used and why it is used because uh, from uh, top to bottom, the, uh, um, the, uh, it, the, the meaning becomes narrower, right? So if you are using, uh, if you are drafting a claim where you are using a transitional word consisting essentially of, you are actually narrowing down your claim a lot to that particular component which you are only mentioning. And only that component will be there in that particular composition if you are saying. So, uh, and whereas comprise, if you are including comprising as a transitional phase in your claim, that will give you a broader thing like, is this, this, it may comprise more 
like some other substance as well. So it is a broader uh, transitional phase word, which uh, and it implies a broader transitional phase word and uh, uh, in, uh, actually imparts a generalization to the claims. That's why we generally use comprising and uh, do not restrict the claim by using the terminologies including consisting of consisting essentially of unless unless uh, demanded by uh, actually unless demanded by the uh, patent office for certain matters i mean of course some controllers uh, um, ask us to limit it a lot but that is only on certain aspects if the invention is an improvement or a product or a process existing in the art if it is an improvement the invention should be categorized by the feature when comprising such improvement over the prior art in such cases the claim will have uh, two parts separated by the characterized by or wherein so we normally use wherein right that wherein this is the portion where the disease is the composition and composition has concentration ranges of uh, the components have concentration ranges of this to this this to this this to that way now i'm giving an example right yeah and the most important thing which is there that the each claim should be a single sentence what i mean by that is read this example a method of detecting melamine in a test sample comprising combining the set test sample with a melamine ag aggregation inducing agent and a plurality of particles in an aqueous media wherein the particles have an average diameter of between 1 and 2500 2, nanometer mixing the test sample the aggregation including agent and the particles to allow melamine in test sample to interact with the aggregation inducing agent and the particles to produce a change in visual color and a change in turbidity monitoring the media to observe the change in visual color and change in turbidity correlating a change in the uh, turbidity of the media with the presence of melamine in the test sample and correlating the change in visual uh, color of the media with the concentration of melamine in the test sample here what i would like to say that it is a particular method of detecting melamine in the test sample like the method claim so what i meant by uh, uh drafting a claim in a single sentence and why it is said and uh, of course uh, in manual also it has been written that it should be a single it should not include any stop in between you can see the full stop is coming here oh, sorry 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 uh oh I'm, I'm sorry i'm really sorry this is something happened here yeah so uh see so what the, all things are required here that it should be a continued statement although it has portions but that portions is uh given a break by semi right so it is a complete sentence in itself but of course in involves three portions so um i would like like any one of you will volunteer to say that what what portion is what now in in view of my uh, earlier slide it's very really difficult you know in you know like face to face so you know it's very interesting when people are like this is this this is this and now <laughs> i have to wait a lot <laughs> in the is remember yeah okay what is francis now okay yes 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 no is uh, the third part and the body the yeah, body which yeah, is defining yeah. the invention basically yes, right? yes, yes. so in this case also of course what i am showing you is a uh, 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 an independent claim principal claim which we also call i am coming to it later right where it is mentioning the methods and i mean steps also which is involved in that right so the only step which is mentioned here is combining this to this and of course defining the other features other uh, relevant features uh, below but uh, in it, this in itself is a complete claim where you can now further define the uh, relevant features in your dependent claim now dependent claim is something which derives the dependency from this particular claim and defines the invention more specifically coming to that now uh, of course it is a requirement under the act also and it is uh, uh, required for any person who is reading the invention not just the uh, indian patent office but a person to if if uh, if it is granted patent the person which who, who will actually uh, use this particular specification to uh, work the invention they should also be able to act properly so words and the way of writing should be chosen very clearly and uh, so simple the writing is also uh, always appreciated in terms of drafting so it should be uh, uh, clear and sakin thank you dr ramachandran for saying that it was very uh, supportive of you and i would like also <laughs> okay uh, a claim should not be verbose uh, the claim should relate to a single invention or to group of inventions linked to a single inventive concept now this is uh, 
this is a requirement you just please note it down but it is i think it will take a separate session to discuss uh, this particular uh, aspect which is lack of unity of invention so we will not be going in deep to that so there is no restriction as to number of claims that can be incorporated in particular application however of course in india as per the rules which are uh, prevailing you have to uh, you have 10 claims which you don't have to pay for but each claim uh, beyond that particular 10 uh, claim in excess of that particular 10 uh, claims uh, would be uh, cost would cost you uh, 1600 uh, rupees right per claim so uh, beyond that 10 claims you have to give fee for each Okay, so there is additional official fee set for that. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the claim should not be a damn out of scope. Ki disclose nahi kiya ho, kuch aur wo claim kar rahe hain. Bilkul nahi hona chahiye. Disclose kijiye. Usme se aap claim kijiye. Jitna bhi broad aapko karna hai, reasonably broad karke apne claims ko. That is the ideal uh, way of drafting and uh, providing this specification or the description to the IPO so that they can uh, they at least should not raise clarity objection or. Uh, Suff insufficiency of disclosure objection that way. The claim must be fully supported by uh, the uh, description. The claim should be clear in the sense that it should not cause any speculation. Like terms we generally use, and you may have noticed also, a lot of use cut there. Lesser than, higher than, about, and a uh, thin, strong, major part. So these are all relative terms. Relative terms we use karna rather than you can use the quantity as such. I mean. Uh, amount as so avoid using relative terms in, when 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 drafting this any uh, uh, can be used in some context and such as is uh, like something which we uh, we may use in some context but i would uh, suggest uh, and i, I would uh, discourage use of those terminologies by drafting claims this way um ha ambiguous and of course it should not be ambiguous or i'm really sorry for the disturbance ambiguous and hypothetical uh, nature ke claim nahi hone chahiye anyways uh, it should not be hypothetical claim it should be proved and of course Uh, in life sciences, is very important that when you are claiming something, you provide an ample data to prove that particular claim. Right? Uh, any term which is used in the claim must be either found in the description or fairly inferred from the description. So, by drafting specification, which I will come later also, since we are uh, technologists and scientists here, uh, certain terminologies are there which are very peculiar to the art. Right? So, it is always advisable to use, even if you are using abbreviation, to provide at least once. in like uh, or or to include a definition definition section in the specification where you are defining that particular terminology once and uh, saying that it includes like uh, in in the context of invention it can mean this 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 like cells seen in electrical uh, science it means cells right the battery but cells in our uh, life senses means uh, uh the, the basic uh, the unit of life like cells proper cells like right? organs like that so uh, that needs to be defined properly because different terminologies have different meaning in different uh, area of science um it is uh, uh suggested by the ipo and it is required by the ipo as well that a trademark should not be included in patent application any kind of trademark should not be included if you have like say some drugs are there who have uh, which which has trademarks so that drug with the trademark name should not be included uh if it can be defined with this chemical name or uh, the uh, the uh, chemical name should be included uh if it is completely unavoidable um, unavoidable and it's like it's not introducing any kind of ambiguity then it might be allowed but not to take any chance you should generally not uh, or or discourage this practice of including trademarks in the application as i mentioned earlier the first claim is always the independent claim which is called the principal claim which includes all the essential features very uh, generally it should because uh, through that you are deriving the dependent claims and all the dependent claims are required to have antecedent basis of that particular feature you are defining in claim 1 or the principal claim which is so to say so uh, that is needed and uh, and a very important point which is not generally mentioned uh, by um, uh, like it is not mentioned in manuals as well that um, use article a like a should be used for uh, any any of the uh, nouns or proper nouns or word for when you are drafting claim 1 or any independent claim for the, for that matter e right and then later on coming to uh, sorry yeah coming to uh, the specification how i remove this coming to specification the or, or the provisional or complete application the content this was with re respect to claims now it is ended like claims how you draft that i have given an idea to you and i'll be showing an example as well of that later on but uh, now the complete specification how it should be drafted complete specification should always include form 2 a complete or uh, provisional i'm sorry provisional and complete both 
should include form two, which is the application uh, for describing your uh, invention. So it, it reflects title of the invention. It includes detail of the applicant, which are there. There can be more than one applicants also. There are all the details, which details include name, address, and nationality that needs to be mentioned. And the preamble of the description. So in case of provisional application, the preamble follows a following specification describes the invention. That's that's it. Nothing you have to mention, right? It is only describing the invention which you are intending to claim later on. For complete, the preamble uh, comes. The following specification particularly describes the invention and the manner in which it is to be performed. So here you are now from the reasonably broad provisional application. You are coming to your uh, invention, which is reasonably general, but you are coming to that specifically now, and you are providing the best mode of working of invention as well through examples or even if, if it is kind of a device through uh, drawings of the device and of course to working of the device so that will be the complete specification uh goals what what both of these uh application involves uh technical field is there in which you briefly describe the field of your invention background art in which you are giving the brief of the existing knowledge which is there so in that case some people prefer uh referring to some literatures which are existing there and uh, um, saying that okay this literature defined this now but but it includes some kind of uh, deficiency so that is always advisable to uh, include in your background art the problems which lies in the art emphasize on the uh, results of the solution which is given from by your invention just to make to just to show that your invention is actually providing a solution or, or of course it, if it is doing you are you are just emphasizing in point that why your invention is needed for that matter the objective here one or more aims of the invention can be listed so your one invention can be like say if you are saying that i'm just uh, i'm just preparing a diagnostic kit a particular tool i'm, I'm giving and that is there so of course with that uh, the aspect which you may claim is method of detecting that particular uh, target molecule whichever is there in the sample and uh, that can also be an aspect of course even the powder form also is it not possible or is it not possible to make any kind of a swab or thing also so then you have to uh, reasonably think about all the possibilities which are there to cover it in your pattern so that is there so um, objective is that Maybe I generally include as per my practice. I generally include objective in my uh, provisional applications. When I mention that this, this, this aspect I can achieve, and I always discuss this thing with inventors that uh, you say it because uh, if you are saying that yes, you can achieve that particular objective, only then I'm going to write it. Because if it is not possible, or if you are, if you have like, if you have you know, visualized that it cannot be, then writing it would unnecessarily disclose that particular aspect, and maybe later on if I'm developing some. Something I could not be able to uh, claim it because it's already there in the provisional application, which gets published after filing the complete specification. It will be in public domain, right? So uh, I always advise that whatever you are visualizing, just uh, think about it that you will be able to provide it in the complete specification or at the time of filing provisional, and then only include it in the objective. In complete, I generally avoid filling objective because there I am with my whole data and whole set of experiments, and I have achieved what I, I want to achieve, and now I'm just want to claim my subject matter. So I generally avoid that particular section in my complete specification. Now summary. In summary, of course, it is required, uh, and some people have this practice that they exactly in verbatim in format they uh, um, uh, copy paste the uh, claims in the summary but uh, here i would say that in summary you just have to provide very briefly that what is your invention a, a more specific feature of it which is of course the novel inventive feature of your invention and then let it be there uh, the description of drawings if drawings are provided by you please uh, have a section where you are uh, briefly describing your drawings like figure one is illustrating this figure two is illustrating this figure three is illustrating this. now the, the major portion or uh, the major section is detailed this description <clears throat> it involves all the relevant information as i mentioned earlier all the embodiments the example which are related to the invention it can be anything and and then comes the abstract which includes title and brief uh, information related to the invention. Now, one example which I am showing is of NDRI itself. Uh, 
Dr. Rajan, please tell me if you are able to see that hyperlink which I have opened. Like it is opening right now. Is it is it visible? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So see, this has been written properly. Uh, all the form to uh, actually I actually uh, downloaded it from Patent Office site. So what they do is they they just uh, uh, separate form two from the specification. But form two I will be showing you again. So this is there. This is there which you can see. So it's a very well written uh, document. So they, they have provided mobility of invention as well in this, but that is not required. Some 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 sections are not re relevant also, but that's fine. So field of invention is there. See, they have provided this field of invention here, right? The background of invention has been provided with reference to the uh, uh, the literatures which are available and uh, the existing material. See, see, this is uh, this they have actually mentioned in uh, like uh, separate column, but uh, it can be included in the background section. Itself. So the existing method and their limitations. That is important. When, whenever you are mentioning it, it actually giving you a kind of I would say edge uh, to prove to the patent office that your invention does involve uh, like it is very important and it involves uh, potential to be getting a patent. Objective. They have mentioned objective. So see, uh, there are uh, so they have provided use as well. But uh, uh, sometimes we draft also, and in this matter, I would say that sometimes we draft. Uh, the specification keeping in the mind of international practices as well. So, uh, just to give a brief of it, uh, in EP or in European countries, use are granted, right? So, we include aspect of use as well, just uh, for the purpose that in case, in case the complete specification can go to EP, and if you have an intention to filing abroad on foreign countries, then uh, use can be patentable there. So that way we keep that aspect because even if even there as well, if something or some aspect is not disclosed earlier in the specification, it's very difficult to add on it later on. It's not very possible. So that's why we keep that aspect. Now, so detailed description they have uh, um, general, actually provided this uh, thing. So it is very nicely drafted. They have given commercial value of invention as well. See, here is here is the good description of drawings they have provided. And then, then table summary, all the data has been provided. So here the only one mistake which I noticed is that that uh, brief description of drawing should be in other section, right? Like other section. It should not be like in the description section, detailed description section. It should be a separate section itself. So that is one thing. Um, these are all the table which is there. So you can see, yeah. So they have included reference. However, it, these uh, mentioning of references are not important, right? Uh, if you are, if you have already mentioned the brackets, it's enough. It, it, it uh, usually I think consi I consider them not useful because they increases page numbers and then uh, page fees, right? Because uh, in addition to thirty, you have to pay eight hundred uh, INR per page. So that is the thing. So yeah. Now the don'ts. So do not start the claims on same page where the specification ends. And I have seen examples of, of the institute itself. And here I am talking about that. The claims were drafted in line like in them completely. Like, so please uh, start the claims from the recording stopped. Because it's a separate document. And uh, the claim structure should be drafted as discussed above. Um, I'm just showing an example and just a merely an example. And uh, I before showing it, um, I'm just giving a disclaimer that to whoever this uh, application belongs, please uh, don't think otherwise. It's just for an example, right? So in this, uh, see, more or less everything is okay, right? Uh, you can see that a process for manufacturing this preamble has been drafted. Having it could have been comprising to just to increase the um, scope, right? And uh, going again, like they have provided this uh, so to avoid the term like preferably that could have been avoided, right? Preferably terminologies that should be avoided. Um, other others, I believe it's okay. Of uh, uh, minim minimal things are there that. Um, so now they are claiming a process, right? This is a process, fine. In second dream, you can see this is an exopolysaturide producing cultures. So preamble completely changes. So this uh, has faced a lot of issue on clarity. Recording in progress. So if, if you are claiming a process for manufacturing, you are actually defining what I said, the field of the technology, right? Uh, the preamble actually states that, defines that. In, that should be in continuation. Now, now if you are claiming a process, the process should be defined in later on, right? Mm. Not abruptly like this. See, from where this exopolysaturide came. So it's like the process, it should be the process 
as claimed in claim one, wherein now now and you can see that now uh, exhibit here. So wherein the uh, the agro polysaccharide producing cultures produce mongrel yellow uh, this particular Th that means it has to be adopted, right? Again, considering again the ratio of streptococcus this, so it it is very big, right? Oh, okay. Should be directed to the process. So that is that is there. And uh, uh, see now again suddenly this seventh in on seventh position this process came in right and there is no wherein nothing nothing mentioned and least independent claims also you have to categorize your feature by the terminologies wherein or categorize here right so one one correct uh, application which I may um, one application which I may uh, show it to you is just, okay on this one so. So here I am going to just show you the granted pattern which was dealt by me itself. This and uh, the claims is there. So the claim which was granted for uh, like I would say uh, that I have defended was this, right? Of course it was a uh, well looking, but this is like I am just claiming a syn uh, synthetic uh, peptide. Uh, I'll show to the claim games. Yeah. Then there is a method claim which is going like this, where you have preamble method for producing an antibody composition where then said antibody binds immunospecifically to biological activity molecule and all these things. Preparing this, see, I am not including any uh, language which is preferably and something like that, right? And it is all set of one thing. So this has been granted also. Of course, you have limitations because when you uh, uh, draft a claim or and you know get it examined by the uh, IPO, they raise so many questions over clarity or over novelty and stuff that you might need to restrict your claims to particularly uh, the ex examples provided in the specification or whatever you have done like too specifically but um, while drafting I would suggest to have a, a reasonably broad uh, um, uh, ranges your drafting so that uh, your your actually your enforcement uh, scope is improved by that. So uh, by this, I will be ending my uh, presentation and will be very happy to receive uh, questions from your end. Thank you so much for listening so patiently to me. Uh, thank you, Shikha. Thank you, Anush. I think you can unshare your slides. Yeah. yeah. Shikha, uh, I have lost the the chat. Uh, probably you can read from there itself. Uh, uh, Oh, okay. And, okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just uh, tell the audience that uh, I have already asked the Shikha to share her slides. She has agreed for that. And uh, yeah. if you want the slides, I can send by email. So kindly do indicate if, if you need the slides. Yeah. Shikha, thank you for uh, you know, uh, covering the, the the other part also, the initial part also. In fact, uh, you know, we had many lectures on the initial part, but it always stimulates, uh, you know, uh, whenever you heard from the different uh, uh, person, they have their own you know, idea and their own perspective. Absolutely, and, absolutely, absolutely. I, I actually focus it on the life sciences portion because while also because see in uh, in India, uh, inventions related to sciences getting it to that phase of search itself is a challenge. And after obtaining, after so much of uh, efforts involved in that and obtaining something which could be of a potential of getting a pattern and still because of these preclusions which we have we don't get it i also feel as as i'm i am a technologist i know that it's very difficult to get something from the and uh, like you know research which we conduct and if you're getting it and you're not uh, uh, you know receiving a true value of it it, it hurts sometimes so that is a preclusion there but uh, if scientists would be mindful of what not to uh, uh, you know direct your research towards if that is not a patentable subject matter instead like i said process of uh, treatment is not patentable but apparatus which can lead to a treatment it is uh, patentable so uh, a scientist can think of actually developing a apparatus rather than going for a process of treatment right so that way it is there and thank you chicken and uh, I, I particularly like the claims part slide which uh, you know which was the talk of the today and uh, and i think it was eye opening many things were becoming more clear although you know we were doing it uh, you know uh, unwillingly but you had made uh, very clear that uh, this should be the way to write the claim and thank you very much.
I request the audience if, uh, if they can ask directly the Shikha the questions. Yeah, because I'll take first. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, yeah uh, Dr. Rubiri, please. Uh, thank you, Madam, for such a nice talk and uh, eye opening talk regarding the uh, patent and the claims. So, I have a uh, small doubt that if something we have published in the student thesis, can we make it patent or it is not patentable? Uh, so, see, uh, that depends on the time duration also, but in thesis also, if you have published, and I believe thesis are very, uh, I would say they are very elaborated documents, right? You have to mention everything in that. Uh, my advice to you will be not to publish the thesis uh, first rather than file a provisional application for that and then get it published. So, and if you have already published it, uh, if you have already published it and if you are uh, direct, like, if you can see that invention is involved in something which is somewhat, the, the particular uh, novelty or not a novelty we can generate, but inventive step is something which is not disclosed by that th thesis, then we may uh, pursue that particular portion of your invention. That will be only particular portion, not the all the invention who has at such because thesis. Right now we also face this problem with I think one of the any inventors that the thesis only uh, disclosed everything. But then I believe that uh, that inventor they have given us a very uh, elaborated, comprehensive uh, differentiations between the invention which is being claimed and the uh, uh, the uh, information which was. Uh, submitted in thesis that how this thesis is not directing towards the invention otherwise as thesis will be cited as a prior art uh, Dr. Ravina, not only thesis it is annual report or news Everything, anything yeah anything for that matter so oh, that's okay. why yeah so before publication if, if you uh, as i said there are three p's right so uh, there should be first patent second publication and then product Right, so that goes in that way, right? Not publication first for all scientists of India. I always say it was earlier culture when IP was not that uh, known in the earlier culture of science. And as Dr. Ming said, that uh, you know, science is evolving, so do we evolve. So, in that case, first file patent, then submit anything, whatever you want, like that paper is uh, going on or publications are going on. I have dealt with other institutes of India also where they have made it important that your publication paper will only uh, be uh, sent away when you show me the pet provisional patent application number. Otherwise, I'm not sending you paper. But that, that we have phase. The scientists come to us and say, ma'am, my have provisional file. Ho like that they come. So this we can, as an as an uh, policy also, we can include Dr. Rajin Sharma in our second year. I also that unless your patent uh, uh, application number is there, complete provisional, whatever it is, your publication should not go out of the institute. So Thank you. that should be good. Uh, not exactly question. Any like Indian vector research institute. Uh, anything directly from thesis is not given as patent because they say that the thesis is under public domain. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we, uh, whenever we have in mind that something could be patented, we we don't clearly mention in the thesis. We we I mean we somehow make it uh, unclear and I I understand sir. Submission in a fixed deadline because a student needs to take higher up degrees like PhD and ARS later on. We cannot delay PhD submission, thesis submission. Okay. And uh, the other fact is that thesis is under public domain. So, this is a very pretty question and we need to deal the situation very in a Yeah, that's what sir, I'm saying that whenever you are starting your thesis, of course it takes time. So it's not just one day process, right? You have time of like, uh, I would say four years, five years to do that, right? So, whenever, you, and, and this thesis is particularly specifically related to one portion of science, right? At least one portion of, it may include different portions as well, but you are determined that you are going to write thesis about that particular subject and get it presented in, or defend your thesis in, uh, to, to obtain, in order to obtain a PhD degree, right? So, when, when you commence that research, you know that I'm going in that direction. Why not to file a provisional application for that matter? And in the meantime, when you are generating your results to fulfill your thesis, why not to submit those results in patent application and then uh, get a complete ap application file in between of that four or five years of time? You have your patent. By filing provisional only, you are protected. Right? right? By filing provisional only, you are protected. And after that, why, why I am saying you are protected, like later on, if you not decide to pursue that provisional application also, you'll say, I result me, I or there are many factors. Tasi nahi hai, jo bhi hai, whatever, jo bhi hai, chiz hai. But provision is already in public domain, at least, at least, nobody working in the same field of yours, say your competitor for that matter, can get a patent for that particular idea because your, your provision will be there. 
But all the provision doesn't get published, so it is very uh, advisable to get uh, like what you say, complete file and then leave it if you want to. कि complete publish होता है ना फिर आपका काम तो publish है ना तो वो वो as a priority सबके लिए काम कर रहा है तो at least आपकी invention का कुछ आगे नहीं हुआ ठीक है पर उसी आर्ट से रिलेटेड अगर आप सजेस्ट कर रहे हो कुछ तो at least उसी आर्ट से रिलेटेड कोई और inventor benefit नहीं ले सकता because your document is there showing that see this particular person has worked. In that particular field and suggested all this. In view of this, you are not getting patent. Now your competitor is not getting patent. They will never get a patent. Because so, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Anant Dothre has raised. Yeah, Mr. Dothre, please. Please, please Anant. Ah uh, yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Ashika, Ms. Ashika. Actually, uh, I have I want to discuss one particular case. Like in dairy engineering, uh, we have certain equipment which are uh, working on some universal principle. And they have been designed to work on particular scale of operation. If we have to downscale it, or if we have to upscale it, we need to totally change the design, and we need to change the material of construction also in some cases. Hmm. So in that case, will the downscale or upscale design will be will it be patentable? Absolutely, absolutely, it will be patentable. But it will work on the same principle. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. You are showing. You see, downscaling. Uh, when you are showing uh, something like ups, uh, in place of upscaling, I will say it will be more positive. So you know, I'm saying that something is going upscale means you are saving time, right? Yeah, exactly. So you are saving time. You are saving cost, right? And as I mentioned, that will involve a technical advancement, and you are changing the structure as well. So it kind of a, it it will be kind of a new device itself. Yeah. Yeah. So it will be a kind of a new device and an uh, inventive device for that matter, which is uh, economically viable, as I mentioned to involve in this. We also show that, and in terms like maybe it may it may give a different result also. A better result, maybe a better purity result. If you in terms of upscaling, you are saying so, maybe a better purity or something like that. And that you can show and get a patent for it. It is patentable. Okay. Yeah. Th- thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, much, sir. I have another question, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. please. Good. Yeah. Uh, Shiva, thank you very much for um, enlightening us with uh, IP issues. Now, uh, one question is: uh, uh, Can we use the commercially available culture for developing a new product? Ah. Uh, Yes, maybe you may. You may. Uh, here I would like to mention it. So, uh, any any commercially available culture when you are using, uh, of course you have to provide the sources internally, right? Everything you are doing that. Uh, in that case, uh, see it is arguable in terms of like. NBA, National Bar Diversity Authority plays a main role here in it comes. That that particular subject matter, if you are if you are preparing a like if you are preparing something using an already commercially available culture, that's fine. That particular product can also be patented. No no issues about that. The only regulations come in between is NBA filing of the uh, you know national uh, this application which uh, the permission from the NBA that if it is used from Indian uh, vendors. Then also, then also they have this restriction implied. But then also the the person or the applicant has to take permission from NBA of using the same, and and have this uh, ABS agreement signed. So that comes into picture. Otherwise, it is patentable. So that formality is an additional formality which will come into picture. So that's if you are saying, if you are saying that you are commercially buying it from an American company, like. Right? Kind of like say for some 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 matters. Um, I believe I'm I'm not getting the name. I think. Uh, okay. Chris Hansen. Chris Hansen. Ah. Chris Hansen. Yeah. Let me tell you. Yes. Yes. That's it. Chris Hansen culture. So it's available. Plenty available in India. As yes, we will we will uh, we will be using it and doing it and mentioning it on specification. And if if some kind of objection of our NDA is raised, we can argue against it and say no issues about that. So they are selling throughout the dairy industries, so and they are using such culture so and using that. developing the product. Absolutely, we can we can argue against that. So it is patentable, and we can argue against it as well. Thank you, Shikhar. But Shikhar, Chris Hansen is a Denmark-based company, so I don't know. Probably the culture is of Danish origin. So, That's what I'm saying. That it is arguable because you were mentioning it in your uh, specification also that it has been bought from yes. a company which is based in Denmark, yes. right? So it is not from India as well. So if you are not mentioning it as from India, no no requirement of India will be raised there. Or if raised. If it is because they what do they do is like what IPO do is they just see or they search keyword search for the biological material and raise and be an issue every time they do. So But that, Shikla, in this case, uh, I believe that invention, uh, you know, the obviousness and inventive and all those points 
uh, will be uh, in this case uh, culture may be one of the you know secondary thing the main point may be the other i mentioned the other part of culture may be the uh, you know as a urgent point they have used it okay so uh, just make it clear mr devraj as uh, sorry dr devraj that uh, when you are uh, using that subculture what you are producing a compound or or a, or, a, or a genetically modified culture yeah i will just close to you see now see the culture okay that is well known that it is it's producing it is going to produce some component some vitamin okay that's well known established now i will be changing the matrix in which i'll be using it so that it produce that component that vitamin in a significantly higher quantity so what i am claiming here is so uh, of course this organism is established but the medium which i am using ah, is, so which is actually which is giving the very high results i want to so media point. so media anyway the com the main component will be media then right i mean the d matrix which you are using right so if that will be defined the claim so you can claim the media in any way i don't think that the um, that picture will come like of course the nva will come into picture in that case even if it does we have a good argument set for that that we are come to thank you very much sir thanks so that Yeah. Uh, Shiva, somebody, uh, Doctor Sabur, I think he is there or not? Uh, Doctor Sabur has asked, can a population of animals be developed as a result of selective breeding? So we have an animal genetics and breeding department in India also. But they are writing, can a population of animals be developed as a result of selective breeding? Uh, so implication is change in gene genotype frequency as compared to base population, resulting in desirable character characteristics. Can be patented? No, as I mentioned, Section Three J specifically mentions that animals or plants in whole or parts thereof also, the cells also are difficult to uh, get patented. In that case, uh, that this is not be a uh, patentable subject matter. But of course, of course, saying that uh, a process of screening that uh, these these particular population which you are saying. using their genotypes a process of doing it that is also questionable in some times but just merely to um, segregate them or to screen them that we have done but uh, no it won't it won't be dr rajput sir directly asked a second very nice presentation Uh, Thank you so much. After so long, I am actually. I am just going to the past of NDRI, where certain confusions prevail in uh, isolating and bacteria isolate and using for the probiotic. Mm -hmm. So, do you think it is essential to deposit in MTCC uh -huh. and isolate from the Indian origin? But he has prepared with just some therapeutic value. Whether that isolate is still to be deposited in MTCC or sir, just permission from the biodiversity authority is sufficient. Ah, uh, sir, coming to this, it will involve two three features which I like to highlight. First of all, isolated, nearly isolated microorganism. As I mentioned in my slide, also that section three C comes into picture. That naturally occurring living and non living. things are not patentable so mere isolation wo patentable ho gayi in subject matter pehli baat agar aapne isolate karke usko indian origin mein hi isolate karke agar usko aapne change kiya hai genetic material aur wo of course wo jo cheez aap bata rahe hain aap agar usko nahi describe kar pa rahe hain unki culture ko uske features ko chahe koi bhi mai jaise bolte hain kis bacteria ka hoga to kitne pe kitna matlab कितना उसका कॉलोनी बन रहा है कैसा बन रहा है कौन सा बैक्टीरिया ये सब नहीं डिफाइन कर पा रहे हैं तो हाँ उसको डिपॉजिट करवाना इज इम्पोर्टेंट मॉडिफाइड नहीं है सिर्फ आइसोलेट लिया दही बना लिया और दही में कहा कि ये कोलेस्ट्रॉल लो कर रहा है तो वो कल्चर में डिपॉजिट करना जरूरी है डिपॉजिट करना जरूरी नहीं है सर अगर आइसोलेटेड इन भी आप ये कह रहे हैं कि आपने उसको सिर्फ आइसोलेट करके जनरली तो वो रहेगा कहीं ना कहीं भी मतलब अगर आपने एकदम ही नया कोई बैक्टीरिया डिस्कवर किया जो कि जिसका कि कहीं भी कुछ मोन नहीं है जिसकी जिन्होंने आइसोलेट किया है कहीं से भी मान लीजिए एक स्पीशी नोन है लेकिन वो स्पीशी साइंटिफिक एरिया में नोन है आपने कहीं से भी आइसोलेट किया लेकिन अगर वो स्पीशी जो आप आइसोलेट कर रहे हैं जान की कर रहे होंगे वो अगर आप जान के आइसोलेट कर रहे हो उसका इलेक्ट्रोलाइसलस को लेता उसका है सबको पता है कि इलेक्ट्रोलाइसलस है मां स्पीशी उसी में कि मतलब वो है ही नहीं उसका कहीं भी इन्फॉर्मेशन ही अवेलेबल नहीं है उस केस में करने की जरूरत पड़ सकती है क्योंकि वो कहीं अवेलेबल नहीं है पब्लिक में वो डिपोजिट करना मैंडेटरी होगा क्या इन केस वे दैट इज अ डिस्कवर्ड वेरी न्यू कर रहा है कौन सी फैमिली से कर रहा है वो अलग ही एक साइंटिफिक पूरा प्रॉपर प्रोसीजर है शिखर मैं मैं इन इंडिया ने समबडी हैज डेवलप्ड 
uh, you know, fermented product, fermented milk product, and uh, they wanted to apply for a patent. They had developed a unique process, so process they want to apply, and in that in that process, uh, they have used a uh, uh, culture also which they have isolated. So, probably, sir, the question is that in such cases, we need to deposit it to MTCC. No, no, uh, see, uh, when you are isolating, that's what I am saying. That when you are isolating a known culture, you are not. When you are isolating, uh, isolating a completely new culture which is, was not known. But, uh, but I think and and we keep on insisting that it should be deposited. I'm not. I'm not. No, uska uska lagay. That is another another aspect. I will say why. जब अगर मान लो आपने known किया हुआ है, तब तो a deposit authority is something different. NBA is different, right? वो वो दूसरा दूसरा authority है. That is international deposit authority is completely different. अगर middle class city, NBA comes in different picture. एनबीए का मेन मोटिव ये है कि वो बायो सारे बायोलॉजिकल रिसोर्स को रिसोर्सेज को प्रिजर्व करके रखना चाहते हैं उनका ये था वैसे तो उसमें जब उन्होंने बायोलॉजिकल रिसोर्सेज अपने एक्ट में भी जो बायोडाइवर्सिटी एक्ट है उसमें जब डिफाइन किया है उसमें उन्होंने माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिज्म भी इंक्लूड कर लिया तो अगर आप सिर्फ ये कह रहे हो कि आप नॉन माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिज्म को मान लो इंडियन सॉइल से कहीं भी अपने बाथरूम से भी इन आप निकाल रहे हो उस टाइम पे भी आपको क्योंकि आप इंडिया में हो और क्योंकि वो माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिज्म इंडियन ओरिजिन का है आपको एनबी अप्लाई करना अगर एक केस ऐसा आता है कि बाहर से प्रोक्योर हुआ लेबोरेटरी में कंटामिनेट हो गया और आपके एनवायरमेंट में पहुंच गया उसको भी आइसोलेट करके नया कह देते हो तो ये तो फ्रॉड हो गया वो तो वो तो जेनेटिकली मॉडिफाइड हो गया ना सर तो आपके पास मॉडिफाई नहीं किया आ गया मिक्सअप हो गया पर ओरिजिनल तो उसका मान लिया डेनमार्क का है कहाँ का है और आपने कहा कि ये तो मेरा इंडिया का ही है परमिशन तो आपने कह दिया इंडिया का तो करना पड़ेगा एनबीए फाइल करना पड़ेगा फिर एनबीए समथिंग डिफरेंट इंडियन डिपॉजिटरी के लिए सॉरी इंटरनेशनल डिपॉजिटरी अथॉरिटी के लिए सिर्फ एक रिक्वायरमेंट है की आपका ऐसा माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिज्म होना चाहिए जो कहीं भी पब्लिकली अवेलेबल ना हो ठीक है वो वो रिक्वायरमेंट है जैसे कि मान लो आपने डिस्कवर भी कर लिया है कोई एंड आई एम सीइंग अबाउट डिस्कवरी दैट दैट पर्टिकुलर ऑर्गेनिज्म वाज नॉट एक्सिस्टिंग नो वन इन द फील्ड ऑफ साइंटिस्ट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट लाइक लोग जो काम कर रहे हैं माइक्रोबोलॉजिस्ट हैं उनको भी नहीं पता यू आर गिविंग अ कम्प्लीटली न्यू स्पीशीज टू दैट पर्टिकुलर ऑर्गेनिज्म देन यू हैव टू डिपोजिट इट यस एक नया स्ट्रेन मिलता है तो आपका हां यस यस सर यस सर दैट्स व्हाट मैडम शिखा आई हैव वन क्वेश्चन यस सर हेलो Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Suppose Hello. Uh, my, uh, my student thesis work is going on and they will complete yes, his sir. work, and uh, I want to patent on. Uh, a... Yes, sir. Okay. So yes, how sir. much time is required for patent a file? Suppose in India I need to present the sum for this uh, patent, huh. and then I will uh, apply for um, say submit the patent application. Huh. Yes. So how how much time it will take? So you see, once the patent application is filed, the drafting takes around like if you are talking about uh, provisional. I would say hardly a day or two, right? After search or search conduct, it goes out. That is, some work is done. Some work is done. Some work is done. But if I give you an idea, I will tell you. In one day, we file the provisional application. Two days, we file it. Okay. Provisional application file. After filing, you are secure with respect to your date, right? You have your your date is there. Your provisional application is there. Now, you have no tension. No need. That if I submit my thesis, then my thesis will become the priority. No, because you have already provisional application filed. अब उसके बाद आप आपके पास जितना टाइम है उसके हिसाब से आप अपना डेटा कलेक्ट करके कंप्लीट स्पेसिफिकेशन फाइल करिए विद क्लेम्स ठीक है क्या वो क्या प्रोटेक्ट करना है और उस बिटवीन यू कैन प्रेजेंट योर थेसेस बिकॉज यू हैव सिक्योर योर डेट ऑफ माय फाइलिंग प्रोफेशन आफ्टर द फाइलिंग Has a time period of 12 months from the filing the uh, complete specification. I mean, if first uh, January 2022, I'm going to file. So, I have first January 2023 hai to file my uh, complete specification. Right? I have 12 months time. Your first January will be. You, in between May, May, June, May, July, May, you can never give up your thesis. You don't have to worry about your thesis becoming your priority. And then comparing your thesis with the uh, invention, you're going to get protected. वो आपका tension नहीं रह रहा उस time पे. After filing that provisional, uh, sorry, complete specification, there are timelines which I said कि मैंने इसमें include नहीं किया because it will बहुत ज़्यादा time हो जाता. Uh, after that, 18 months में आपका complete specification publish होता है. 18 months के बाद आपके पास time होता है request for examination file करने के लिए. वो request for examination का timeline है 48 months from the date of priority. तो चार साल बाद में का जैसे अभी कर रहे हो चार साल बाद तक आप वो रिक्वेस्ट का एग्जामिनेशन फाइल करते हैं पहले भी कर सकते हैं कोई बात बात नहीं है आफ्टर पब्लिकेशन आप कभी भी फाइल कर सकते हो वो आपने फाइल कर दिया दैट गेट्स एग्जामिन बाय द इंडियन पेटेंट ऑफिस योर एप्लीकेशन और योर क्लेम दैट हैज दे हैव देयर ओन क्राइटेरिया ऑफ एग्जामिनिंग 
वो आपको एक रिपोर्ट देंगे एसीआर जिसको बोलते हैं फर्स्ट एग्जामिनेशन रिपोर्ट वो आने के बाद आपके पास छह महीने का टाइम है प्लस थ्री मंथ अगर ज्यादा टाइम लगता है तो और वो थ्री मंथ्स के लिए फी पे करनी पड़ेगी जो कि जनरली अभी बारह हजार है फॉर इंस्टीट्यूट मतलब फॉर लार्ज एंटिटी आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट नेचुरल पर्सन के लिए कम होगी तो वो उसके बाद फिर अगर जैसे आपने अपना रेस्पॉन्स हाल कर दिया फिर अगर मान लीजिए रेस्पॉन्स अच्छा है ठीक ठाक बन गया सब कुछ सारा रिक्वायरमेंट कंट्रोल का पूरा हो गया तो वो एलपीडी इश्यू कर देंगे वो भी थोड़ा टाइम लगाते हैं बिकॉज दे हैव ऑल्सो बैकलॉग इन देर ऑफिस नो मेनी पीपल फाइल कर एन एप्लीकेशन तो दे टेक टाइम एंड नहीं अगर होता तो दे इशू एन हियरिंग नोटिस गिव यूर हियरिंग डेट यू अटेंड द हियरिंग गेट द रिटर्न सबमिशन फाइल एंड आफ्टर दैट इट बेटर एज बी डांटेड सो मिस्टेक्स अभी तो बहुत जल्दी जल्दी कर रहे हैं दे आर डूइंग इट लाइक वेरी फास्ट नाउ अड इज मैंने देखे मैंने छह महीने में भी पैटर्न ग्रांट कर देते हैं देखे हुए हैं फॉर स्टार्टअप बट यहाँ मतलब मुश्किल से तीन साल चार साल लग रहे हैं अब पहले तो आठ आठ नौ नौ साल लगते थे अभी तीन चार साल लग रहे हैं मुश्किल से शिखा आई थिंक क्वेश्चन इज इफ समी कम्स टू यू टू योर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फॉर फाइलिंग ए कम्प्लीट स्पेसिफिकेशन हाउ मच टाइम यू विल टेक सर डिपेंडिंग अपॉन दी अर्जेंसी विच यू विल शोइंग टू अर्स वी कैन ड्राफ्ट इन वन वीक और वन वीक ऑफ कर्स टू एंड फ्रो वाला चीज अब यूजली लोग टाइम लेके चलते हैं तो दे गिव अस लाइक अगर प्रोविजनल फाइल करो तो प्रोविजनल वन वीक का करते हैं और कम्प्लीट के लिए दे गिव अस लॉट ऑफ टाइम मतलब ऑफकोर्स टू थ्री मंथ देते ही है कि अच्छा से ड्राफ्ट हुआ टू एंड फ्रो हो क्लेम्स का ढंग से ड्राफ्ट हो दैट वे माई क्वेश्चन इज I I will apply for patent in our institute first. Okay. Then the institute I will present. Then okay. The institute will send. Ah, ah, fine, important. Ah. Even the time, so I am applying in our institute and institute after presentation, I will go to you. Ah, you know what? Suppose you file the patent application in favor of me. Then how will the 
कुछ और कुछ बनेगा वो अलग चीज है आपका डेट आ गया आपके पास प्रोविजन एप्लीकेशन से योर थेसिस एंड योर एटलीस्ट योर थेसिस विल नॉट बी कंसिडर कार्ड आफ्टर डेट ओके 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 Thank you. We have we have uh, Dr. Ramachandran is there. Uh, so housing designs and feeding devices for livestock comes in the uh, particular section you are talking about the animals. Ah, no, no. If you are talking about uh, devices, I don't think that will come under any of the sections which I mentioned because what I mentioned was section three G wherein uh, the animals uh, and plants and parts thereof would mean that. uh in, in case of plants stem leaves roots this and uh, of course their cells and uh, animals their cells and etc so kind of a housing design which is that apparatus kind of apparatus which is used for uh, serving some purpose in livestock they will not be considered as a non patentable subject matter they are patentable subject matter okay thank you thank you thank you thank you sir thank you thank you ramachandra uh, uh, any any other madam i had one question put in chat box also oh, okay. like uh, we get uh, gi tag for uh, rasgulla or any product mm -hmm. similarly for animal breed though we are calling as a breed and it is registered whether any uh, such kind of provision in uh, across the globe it is there for gi tag for animal breed uh, sir see uh, for plant variety i do know for animals i am really i'm sorry i'm not aware uh, Yes, sir. I can answer it. Yes, yes, yes. So, animal products are covered under the GI tag. Animal as such are not. As such, animals they say that breeding is. A, I mean, they can be uh, uh, protected through. I mean, uh, through that. Uh, yeah. Uh, that breeding uh, thing. Uh, like in case of uh, you know the pashmina uh, goat. Yeah. So, uh, so that goat is not protected. The the product of that. Uh, goat that is sheep goat is protected similarly as you said that rasgulla i mean the animal is not protected it is a product of the animal is protected uh, like in case of kadak but animal also also is very precious rule whatever is there we are following but what is your opinion for future <laughs> Is it not? I I asked actually uh, uh, in Mar. Uh, I forget the name. Uh, Sir is there? Uh, Doctor Soma, I think. Ha, Doctor Soma. I asked him specifically this question. So he said that it is not. Uh, I mean, it is not written in the rule also, but it is said that it. Uh, I mean. Well, uh, I I in this case I believe that uh, I think one law may exist. Wildlife Protection Act is there. Uh, maybe that will be. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe that is. But I'm wild. Yeah, I think uh, it's different from domestic animal, na, madam. Ah, uh, that's what I, I really don't uh, know about the provision. Ah, that does will have. No problem. No problem. It is not much relevant here. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah, you. So yeah, yeah. That's what. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other anyone has any question? Okay, I have one question. Uh, yes. I have filed a provisional application, and uh, then in the complete specification, can I change the title? See, title changing can be done in any point of time. It's not a big uh, uh, issue here, as long as it's actually defining the invention which you are claiming. Because uh, many of time you may have seen on in your applications as well that if we are claiming a process, but if we are claiming a composition, but suddenly now we are uh, amending the claim to delete all the composition claims, and uh, of course. We are keeping it to a, a process claim which was disclosed earlier. So title, of course, some controller says that title to consistent banana. So at the time of filing hearing submissions, also we just change the title from composition to process. So okay. title can be done at any stage. No issues about that. Of course, the content which which whatever you have disclosed, वहाँ पर generally उससे बाहर का content is complete में नहीं आना. That's the thing. Okay. Any more? At one point of time, examiner didn't allow to change the title because this was a process, and we wrote a patent title in terms of which is a product. So examiner said we will not allow it. Title changing, sir. Right. Ah. In final, that complete specification. It's a whole process, I believe. Okay, okay. Now it is allowed. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Or maybe that may not be necessary. That's why they may have asked not to. I mean, उनको कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ा वो उस time पर उस time पर अभी तो फिलहाल फिलहाल वो बोल रहे हैं just make it consistent with PMB. तो जनरली यूजुअली वॉट यू वॉन्ट की पी एम वन ऑफ पी एम वन जो भी आया आप जो भी पी एम वन आपको मिल रहा है फाइनल उससे आपका कंसिस्टेंट होता है During the during the reply of FCR, 
can we increase the number of claims or uh, claims can be modified uh, modified I, of course we can do it but we can have a additional claim so i see uh, that is uh, again somewhat questionable in some some part of jurisdictions like chennai etc but the thing is that as long as you are adding the claim to define more or narrowing down your scope or defining the one feature of your earlier claim in the in the dependent claim you can do so and argue and of course some of the controllers i'm not talking about everyone but some of the controllers if the claim number is increased from the earlier filed uh, claim numbers they want that additional claim fee to be paid so they want that and they sometimes issue uh, section 59 uh, which mentions that uh, nothing can be added so i they, they have their separate interpretation over that so this is all always arguable but some controllers do require uh, payment of fees additional claim fees when uh, claims are added more in number than originally for which the fees was not earlier thank you shikha thank you for engineering type of things uh, do we have any special uh, uh, i mean we, we may have to give the you know uh, dimensions and uh, probably angle yeah, that is there for mechanical drafting again that's why i mentioned that i am actually focusing on life sciences drafting more because mechanical drafting it again it involves a lot of uh, uh, involvement because of course you have to define the structures with all point of views like you know if you are claiming a device it has you have to give uh, front view back view top view side view you know all the dimensions mentioned in there then you have to numerize also all the features all the components and embodiment of that devices then again you have to numerize and put it into the claim numerators the reference numerals so engineering drafting is somewhat different will definitely help. thank you thank you shikha